Hello, everyone. Thank you for viewing today's POSIP Power Session. I'm excited to talk to you all about how to help parents help students at home. My name is Amanda Richards. I'm a former middle school principal turned team member here at POSIP. At POSIP, we help schools strengthen through the power of your community, which improves academic outcomes, sustainability, and stability for your school. We've recently seen in our POSIP reports that parents across the country are asking questions about how to support their student at home. Today, we're gonna to talk about best practices for schools um, to better support parents with academics at home, along with giving parents some tips on how to do this. Um, just like all of our power sessions, there's going to be a lot of information in the next 15 minutes. As a former teacher and educator, talking for 15 minutes straight is not something that um, I like to do in these sessions, but just due to the fact that we want to pack as much information into a short amount of time to really protect your time, I'm going to go through a lot quickly. Um, at the end of the session, I'm going to be following up with this PowerPoint, so if you'd like to chat more about any of these tips, just reply to that email. Our agenda for today, very quick 15 minutes, we're gonna be spending time in three categories to get ideas on how each stakeholder can better prepare um, students with academics at home. So to start, we're going to start with how school leadership teams um, can support parents. Um, if you are a parent or a teacher listening to this session and you hear a good idea um, that you think your school would benefit from, definitely share them with your administration. The first, tip is to open tutoring sessions to parents and publish tutoring calendars publicly. If tutoring is an option on your campus, inviting parents to attend with their student is a benefit to everyone. Teachers can give parents directions of what parents can be doing at home and what teacher actions they can be watching for during tutoring that they can replicate. The second one is sending parents information to online resources. <clears throat> These are just a few free resources that are available to parents that they may not know about, and you might have more online resource to sh resources to share with them. Um, so whatever the resource is, you can easily send these home in an upcoming newsletter, parent email, or post on your school website. Um, when I was a principal around state testing time, we would actually send out parent letters with direct links to Khan Academy videos that would be helpful for the specific student to watch based on their data and got good feedback from parents on that. The other thing that you can do with technology is if your district or school actually pays for any subscriptions, um, sharing student logins and passwords is a great way to support learning at home. Here's an example of a district that gives parents access to all of these sites and the websites they can um, log in at home. You can also encourage parents to advocate to their school or district for other subscriptions that they want to see their child using at home. Um, one of my favorites is Accelerated Reader down at the bottom because Students can actually read any book that's interesting to them and there are some quick meaningful comprehension quizzes about what they read. Next is hosting a curriculum night event um, so that teachers can actually walk through steps and teach new skills to parents. A few of our POSIP schools have actually hosted curriculum nights and I've seen really great success with it. Schools have found this especially helpful for teaching um, new concepts and new teaching methods within the Common Core, since parents might not have been initially taught that way in their schooling. At the event, you can have teacher walk through the lesson as if parents are the students so that they can really understand conceptually what's going on. Parents should also understand that it's okay if they don't know all of the knowledge that they need to help their child at the end of the event, um, but sending home some helpful references and tip sheets during that curriculum night will um, be very helpful for parents at home. Remember to record the session and post it online so that parents can refer back to it or if they couldn't make the event that they can still participate in the learning. Um, POSIP schools also use their weekly bonus question text to get RSVPs for this curriculum night event um, and publicize the event to parents. The next one is providing grade level appropriate reading lists to parents. Having reading lists for parents to push literacy at home will help their child with all subjects in school. Here are a couple websites with reading lists either by grade level or by interest. It's important for parents to read grade level appropriate texts with their child at home. So giving parents some of these lists of books that are good to read is a helpful tool. 
And then the last one is really simple, just setting home ex academic expectations for what you want parents to do with their child. Um, it's a really powerful thing to set expectations um, so that it's really clear. For example, um, in kinder, the parent expectation could be to read to their child for 20 minutes a day. In first grade, the expectation could be that the child reads to themselves for 10 to 20 minutes a day, and so on, depending on the grade. But whatever you want parents to be doing at home, set guidelines for parents to help them gain clarity and follow through on that support for their student at home. Moving to teachers, um, teachers really do play a strong role in supporting parents with academics. The first way that teachers can support parents is just to keep them informed. So that could be posting lesson PowerPoints, resources, or teaching videos that they've done of themselves on a class website. Some free class websites are posted um, on the screen right now. So teachers could use a Google Classroom or a Weebly website to post these resource hubs for parents. The next one is having a class blog that discusses big ideas and ways that parents could support their student during the, the unit. Teachers could write this blog or you could have a student write the blog for a little bit of academic differentiation for them. Um, we are actually gonna be doing a session on academic differentiation soon. So if you're interested in that topic, um, be on the lookout. And the last one is having a class Twitter feed so parents can supplement learning at home and really understand what's going on day to day. So this could be the teacher updating parents on what they're learning in class that day, the objective of the day, or a cool discussion that came up in class that they should continue at home or even just reminders of projects and assignments that are due. Next one, send home graded work. Handing back graded student work is something teachers do all the time, but make sure to find a process that helps students actually show their parents the corrections so that parents can be looking for those common mistakes in the future at home. And then the last one is sharing study tools. Um, sending home a study packet with answer keys to parents at the beginning of the unit um, either in hard copy or posting it, it online um, for parents and students to access. And then the second one is creating some kind of study um, decks for students online. Quizlet.com is a great example of something that allows teachers to create flashcard decks and games for students to practice anytime on either a computer or they have an app version so they could use their phone. Um, teachers can share this with parents so they are aware of the study opportunity that they could have with their child at home. And then the last one, parents. Parents' role is really to monitor, organize, motivate, and praise their academic effort of their student um, as each work piece is done at home. Um, here are some tips for working through schoolwork and pushing your students academically at home. First one, teaching general study skills. Um, this could be making flashcards with your students, finding ways to review notes from class effectively, remembering concepts through creating diagrams or symbols together, um, thinking of questions that may be asked on the test after they've read something or learned something, or just general study skills like time management skills and organization skills. These will be lifelong skills that students need, so having parents help at a young age to ingrain these study habits um, will create a lasting impact. The next one, review questions before reading. If there's a reading passage with questions, like in a textbook, for example, go over the questions and preview them with your child before you start reading. This will help guide their comprehension and read with a purpose. The next one, allowing students to have a productive struggle alone. This can be really difficult for parents, but it's a valuable opportunity for your student to deepen their understanding of what they're learning and come to realize that they're capable of doing really well uh, with effort and perseverance. One way that you can do that is to support students through really good questioning. Um, this is some things if your student gets stuck with a problem or an assignment, you could ask some of these questions. What have you tried? What makes sense so far? Is there another way to think about it? What are you trying to do, solve, or find? How can you start? But really guiding them to um, the answer instead of just giving them the answer is extremely helpful for um, their productive struggle. Next is encourage your child to reach out to their teacher. Encouraging self-advocacy is important for students of all age, all ages. If your student is struggling, try to get them to understand metacognitively exactly what they don't understand about the assignment 
or the problem. If they say, I just don't get it, try to drill down and figure out exactly what they don't get. Most teachers are available for extra help before or after school and also might be able to recommend other resources. Next one, practice math fluency drills. When I say fluency, I'm referring to this concept that there are building blocks of both words and number facts. And the more that students can quickly pull off their knowledge of those building blocks, the more that they can apply them to higher order concepts. So doing some quick routine math fluency drills at home will help your student get better um, at those difficult math problems. Coolmath.com is also a really fun website for students to practice a little math and play a computer game at the same time. And the last one is modeling a love of learning and praising your student for their hard work and effort. While your child does their homework, you can be doing your own. So if that's answering emails or reading a book or newspaper or using your math skills to balance your checkbook. By showing that learning remains important after school's over um, will really help your student understand that these are skills they will be using throughout life. Also, if you're looking for ways to spark your child's curiosity and that love of learning, check out outschool.com. Um, where there are 10,000 plus small group video classes um, created and taught by real teachers. Having your student connect to something that they love to learn about will allow them to see how learning fits into their passions and possibly a future career. So we just talked through a lot of tips, but some of the biggest wins are actually things that you're already doing. For the school, really the number one ways that schools and teachers can support parents is just by making sure that parents have multiple ways of knowing what their child is learning. So if that's academic newsletters, graded work, unit previews, a class syllabus, whatever it is, just making sure that parents know what's happening in their students' learning. And for parents, really the number one way that you can support your student is just to engage them by asking questions about what they're learning, reviewing what's coming home in their take-home folder or um, graded assignments, and really showing an interest in what they're learning. I hope these tips were helpful um, or start to spark some ways that you can continue improving academic support for your students at home, but really working together as a team will lead to success for your students. As an end reflection, is there one way that you can better support parents or students with homework? What is it? Um, so just take that away, take that one thing away that you can start doing tomorrow. Uh, the purpose of these PASA power sessions is really to support schools in making them the best that they can be. PASA has an effective weekly pulse check technology that increases parent engagement and feedback to campus. But we also are here to support campuses in other ways. PASA works with schools all over the country and we know a lot of best practices. My role is to work with school staff members and help brainstorm solutions to problems that you have. We also offer professional development sessions, toolkits of resources, and one-on-one -on -one coaching for schools. I hope to see you at our next power session. The date and topic will be posted on our Facebook page and website, but thank you for coming and I hope you have a great rest of your day.